motivation and time graph, right? Just like the other one. Okay, so your PhD thesis. What is your, generally speaking, what's your kind of motivation for a project kind of yeah, it's low, okay, at the beginning? And so it does, it's not a straight line. What's it towards, just towards the end? Hi. Right, so let's get a deadline. We've got one, there's lots of like them. And we'll put in a average gel. Is it like that? A little steeper? Okay. Okay, a little steeper. There you go. Woof. Right, it goes up like a shark's fin at the end, or water sloshing against the bathtub. Woof, up like that. Okay, pretty typical. We call this hyperbolic discounting. Um, it looks a lot like exponential, but hyperbolic works better. So, um, nothing a problem here. Okay, this is, this is who we all are. Most of our motivation is just before when it's due. You add some temptations in there, immediate alternatives that are pleasant, that are more attractive, like what could you be doing instead of this presentation right now with that wonderful weather outside? I'm sure some people made that choice. So, you can try working here, right? But look at the gap between the temptations and your actual motivation. So you can get a little bit done, but you're eventually always going to pull it away. It'll come like an eyedropper worth of motivation, that speak. And you're constantly going to be pulled away. You're trying to work, and all of a sudden, you know, it's just not there. You want it to be there, that's for sure, because it's convenient, but it's not. So you go along, and you go along, and at some point, these lines cross. And you then all of a sudden, you feel yourself, I can do this. Something clicks, something you focus, and you're getting it done. And hopefully, right, <laughs> depending how it goes, those lines cross early enough that you can get your stuff done. But this isn't really what you want. Here it happens at the beginning of earlier, like an eyedropper at the beginning, and like a fire hose towards the end. None of you drink water this way. You like to have water from a tap and a glass, right? And like, like a tall glass of water, please. And a tall glass of motivation. And that's what you'd actually like. But this is not the way we're set up. So you can, some people say, you might say to yourself, hey, I do my best work just before the deadline. I say, great, okay, so you don't want motivation earlier. Oh, I really do want motivation earlier. Because this isn't under your control. Who set that deadline? When does that do, right? This is somebody else determining when you're motivated, which may or may not kind of coincide, let's say, with the birth of a child, a party, a vacation, other competing deadlines. You, don't, you want to be able to kind of actually put your motivation into your schedule where it's convenient so you can get stuff done. And the payoff for that is enjoying your downtime, is having balance, is being able to work and then take time off work and have a life too. Um, doesn't work that way right now, but maybe it can. We can change it around a bit. Um, for example, if we could get temptations a little lower. Well, then motivation stops earlier. So that's one thing we could look at. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with your goals. It's just you're working it in a temptation-filled environment. It's like trying to diet in a candy store. That's not a good place to diet, right? <laughs> but, you know, trust me, you're trying to work in a place which is chocker box filled with the best distractions that society has ever devised. And there's never been better than today, except it'll be better tomorrow, right? So it's, you know what? You know what's going to happen when that virtual reality thing comes out through here? <laughs> it's it's going to get even harder. And by the way, I can't even imagine of what they're going to put in that, but I know it's not going to be good. Right? All right. You put it the other way around. You make temptations everywhere and easily available. And it makes procrastinators of us all. This is just natural. There's nothing yes or no, it's just the physics of it, psychophysics. If we could change expectancy or value, what you get is kind of a linear transformation like that. Right? So there's some things that you really, really, really like doing, and guess what? You do them a little bit more. We take expectancy, you know, all of a sudden you don't feel good about it, you can do it. So you have this different kind of portfolio of tasks that you have to do, some you like, some you don't, some that you have um, confidence about, some that you don't, some of them are on temptations, and we mix them all around. We're all going to be procrastinators, but we're going to be like snowflakes, no two quite the same. 